Alright, Umid have sub Tico. Today I got my hands on the Galaxy Tab Set Ultra and as evident by the title and thumbnail of the video, I am going to take it apart to see what's on the inside. But before doing so, I want to tell you to not attempt it at home because the adhesives used by Samsung under the display are extremely strong. So if you attempt it, you might end up breaking your display. Additionally, I have gotten a line in my display because I slept on it. It was such an expensive nap, but I have nonetheless ordered a new display for it because I am planning to use it for a longer time. Okay, without further ado, let's get straight into the teardown of this giant tablet. Before heating up the display, we need to power it off. So let's shut it down. After the tablet is turned off, we can eject the card tray. Since I have the 5G version, the tray not only have the SD card option, but also a space for the SIM card. The tray is lacking rubber sealing, meaning it does not have dust and water resistant. We need to heat up the edges for about 2 minutes using a hair dryer, but need to avoid supplying excessive heat as it can damage the display internally. Let's now use a suction cup to create a gap for the prying tool. Using this thin blade, we can easily cut the adhesives, but be very careful. Only a tip of 1 to 2 mm should go inside. The reason for that is the display's flex cables. If you accidentally hit them, the display will either get multiple vertical lines or completely black out. Okay, finally manage to detach the display. Notice we have the BTB cable for the display. It has to be disconnected before separating the display. I would rather like to see contact seeds for rust-free detachment. Here we have our display upside down. The three internal adhesives can be noticed here. It's very difficult to reach safely with a prying tool. We have a giant aluminium foil. It acts as a heat sink to dissipate the heat. Also, it cools off much faster than anything else because it can reflect almost all thermal heat. That heat is then conducted by the huge graphite film thanks to its high coefficient of thermal expansion value, yielding an intensively high melting point. This small sub-board is responsible for the S Pen functionality. It is connected to the rigid OLED display stack via BTB cable. Ok, now to the main thing. We have a conventional 3 stage structure here. The sub-board, the giant 11200mAh battery and the L-shaped motherboard. We can also see 4 AKG speakers surrounding the main unit. We have a black BTB cable for the display, a yellow BTB cable connecting the sub-board to the main board and the card tray. Here we have the optical fingerprint scanner. The display has a hole for reading your fingerprints. On top we have the dual front cameras connected to the board via BTB cable. The battery houses a giant heat dissipating film for better thermal performance. Finally, we have a total of 43 screws securing the entire unit. Let's unbolt them. It's interesting to note that all the screws use the same CRVPH 0001.5mm driver. That's good, because we can unbolt the screws in one go, without having to change our screwdriver. We can now easily lift up the plastic protecting cover, but let's be careful with the left edge. It's locked in. Lift it up a bit and then push it backwards. The plastic cover houses two omnidirectional microphones for stereo audio recording. Finally, on this cover we have the fingerprint reader with contact seals. Now let's disconnect the subboard BTB, battery cable, dock station connector and the two-in-one display cable. It can then be separated completely, meaning it's easier to repair. Here's your close look at the L-shaped motherboard with the front cameras connected to it. Let's disconnect it. Disconnecting all the antenna cables as well, in order to securely detach the board. All the cables plus the antennas should be disconnected. There are two screws securing the board using the same screwdriver. Let's unscrew them as well. We can now finally lift up the motherboard. But let's be careful here, since it's also locked in on the right side. Here you have it. The typical blue colored Samsung motherboard is detached. We have the aluminium foil with a thin layer of silicon grease securing two Qualcomm's chipsets. On the back side we have the SOC. It is also protected by the aluminium foil with silicon grease underneath it. It's for heat dissipation as well. We have the SM8450 Snapdragon 4nm Gen 1 chip with the 12GB of LPDDR5 RAM. 
In addition to the chips mentioned, we also have 256 gigs of UFS memory chip, proximity sensor, Adreno 730 GPU, and power management ICs. Additionally, the flashlight is also soldered on the motherboard. Here we have 12 megapixel wide and 12 megapixel ultra wide selfie cameras with a connector which is directly connected to the main board. Now let's get to the subboard. It's small and simple. There's only one screw securing it. Let's unbolt it. We can now easily detach it, but let's remove the BTB cable and the antenna line to avoid any damage to it. Once disconnected, we can get a closer look at it. It does not have so much on it. We have the Type-C port for charging and data transfer, antennas and a power IC. Look at it, here are the two rear cameras, a 13 megapixel wide and a 6 megapixel ultra wide lenses. Underneath the cables, we have a stereo microphone and of course a hole for the flashlight. Here we have the X-axis linear motor with its own subboard. Forgot to mention the two strong magnets for the S Pen. We have one here with the letter L mentioned on it. An M mark magnet which is repelling the S Pen meanwhile. Here's how these two magnets help the S Pen attach to the back. We have a giant 11,200 mAh battery as well. Samsung seems to have exaggerated a bit with the glue at the battery. A little heat and isopropyl alcohol is required to detach it. But I'm gonna leave it as is because it's gonna take a long while. The speakers have numbers mentioned on them, making it actually easier to find which one needs to be replaced or repaired because the plastic housing varies in design. Okay, before we assemble it, here's everything summarized. It's easier to repair but there is too much to deal with. The speakers are good but not as rich sounding as the M1 powered iPads. It has good strong magnets. 3 microphones for good audio recording, 4 easily replaceable cameras, a simple subboard that can be replaced as well, a battery that's a bit tricky to deal with, an optical fingerprint reader that can be replaced as well, a removable card tray, detachable speakers with a bit of glue underneath them, and finally the display which can be a nightmare to detach and hence replace.